Divorce lawyers of Reddit, what is the most insane, evil, funny, dumb, way a spouse has tried to screw the other? A friend's ex-wife and he settled their divorce with her getting the house, a hefty chunk of retirement, all the gifted jewelry and his holly she had gifted him for his birthday. A few weeks later, a robbery occurred and the only thing that was stolen was the jewelry that he had gifted her, which was intended for their daughter. She tried to file an insurance claim on the jewelry but forgot to get appraisals and add as riders so the max insurance paid was $1,500 for over $20,000 of jewelry. Suspicion is she staged it but is now stuck with stolen jewelry she can't legally sell, nor wear, nor give to the daughter without tipping the dad off to the scam. Bro, today is my day, another where to start? The person who hid a quarter million dollars from a business sale so it wouldn't be included in the equalization payment, while providing frank disclosure on the actual sale number, the person who made a fake prostitution ad for their ex as proof that they were not a good parent, without considering that I would want to know why they browsed prostitution ads during their parenting time, the ones who spent thousands of dollars working out the appropriate access, custody, and support terms. For their dog hard to say unreasonable people keep my lights on at least they cared about the dog unlike the other people in this thread not a divorce lawyer but my grandma sucker her divorce lawyer before she served her husband the papers got pregnant and then convinced her husband it was his he paid child support for 18 years and never had a clue pretty crappy the lawyer had a family of his own they have no idea my mom and my family exist 18 years, 18 years, and on her 18th birthday he found out it wasn't his. Not a lawyer but was a legal intern for a divorce attorney a few years back. Dumbest freaking divorce I ever sat through lasted over 2 years because they refused to let each other get any ground. I was only there for the last year of the divorce but they argued over who got the Christmas ornaments for 4 months. Pro tip, if you're ever in a divorce, saying sure. Take it is infinitely cheaper than your invoice would be otherwise. Not a lawyer but when I went through my divorce we were still in the same house for a few months while it sold. I spent a weekend at my brother's a couple hours away to go to a football game to get out of the house. My ex-wife sold off most of the furniture I was planning on taking. A bunch of my power tools. And tried to give the dog away. Luckily the people didn't show up for the dog. That day I took him to my brother's house for safekeeping. She still tried to get the dog in the divorce and was denied. Soulless B. Pup is my best friend and still going strong almost 13 years old. Not an attorney heard this one from a friend of mine. He was put in the middle of his parents divorce. His mom is a teacher in Ontario Canada and she gets paid very well. 120k per year. His dad is just a general laborer and made about 55k per year. When they got divorced he gave her the house free and clear with the understanding that when she retires he will get 55% of her pension to offset his interest in the house. She agrees, of course, she has to retire for him to get his money. Fast forward a few years and his mom retires but never tells his dad. The son finds out and told his mom, hey you are retired, you have to start giving dad his money. She tells the son, don't tell your dad, please. Fast forward a few more years. He finds out his dad is in financial difficulty because of the downturn in the economy. He backhanded tells his dad that his mom has been retired for a few years now. So he contacts his attorney. Now she is screwed. She pee off the family. Divorce. Caught because she agreed to this and is now trying to screw him over. In the end, he gets 65% of her pension for the rest of their lives and she has to pay him all the money that she owes him. Not a lawyer. Just grew up with a crappy family situation. My mom was an evil mastermind with this divorce let me tell you. So my parents had been separated but living in the same house for a while and it was around the time of year the family would normally go for a camping trip. Canada Day I believe. She convinced my dad that we would break the trip up and he would get a week. Then when he returned she would get a week with us. The three kids. Secretly during my dad's week she got her friends to help clear the entire house out. And I literally mean clear it out. There was nothing left. Not a single clothes hanger. No couches. TVs quite literally nothing. She chose this vacation setup really well too. 
camping meant we didn't need money or have access to cell service which she took advantage of as well and emptied the bank accounts and hid all the money away. She didn't stop there though. She also maxed out lines of credit and all credit cards. Normally this would take a while but she was smart as heck in this approach. Earlier when planning this divorce she had convinced my dad to quit his job. Quite high paying I should add. To start a company. This company was still new and needed a ton of expenses paid so the banks didn't think twice about this ridiculous amount of money being transferred as it wasn't out of the norm anyways from their new setup with the company. Then, when it came time for my dad's trip to end, she told him he needed to call her when he got back in cell range. Upon calling, she told him that she was on the way out in the same direction anyway so we could just meet halfway to spare us kids a bit of driving time on our way to the next trip. Which was odd considering after a week of camping we all wanted to shower and clean up but she was very adamant. We met up and swapped vehicles then my dad was on the way home alone. While we were off to hide away at a location different than where she had told my dad. When he got home he thought we had been robbed. It didn't sink in. He called the cops and started phoning family because of how empty the house was he broke down and didn't know what to do. That's when my mom's dad came over and told him the truth. He said she left him and took everything. She hid us and I believe tried to steal us but that part is a bit fuzzy for me. Eventually it somewhat caught up with my mom. The judge was shocked at what she did. She even went as far as trying to convince us kids that my dad was abusive and had us interrogated by a cop wanting us to lie about him. The whole situation was crazy. She ended up blowing all the money on fancy trips and shopping sprees with her friends. And when the judge ordered her to pay it back she fled the country. Now she lives in Australia and doesn't have to pay anything. Doubt this will be seen. But a family friend was the lawyer on a pretty cut and dry divorce case. He was representing the husband. And he felt pretty bad for him. No bad history between the two but even standard cases can get messy. Apparently his wife was being seriously sharky and trying to take basically everything. The guy was at wit's end. Our family friend was driving behind him on the way to court when he crashed his truck into an SUV. Didn't seem too bad. Flipped the SUV on its side. But he was already in it helping the other driver out. It was right in front of the courthouse so no big deal. Lots of cops around to help. Then our family friend realized something concerning. The SUV looked a lot like the guy's wife's SUV. Before he could say anything, he saw the cops suddenly swarm the guy and pin him to the ground. While everyone watched on thinking this guy was helping, he actually was stabbing his wife repeatedly with a screwdriver. She unfortunately didn't survive. Pretty sure that was the last divorce case our family friend took. TL. DR. Divorce lawyer witnesses his client literally screw his spouse to death. You're right that this one isn't being seen, but it's the most brutal. Child of traumatic divorce here. There's so many and I mean so many things I could post on this thread about how freaking terrible my parents were to each other, but this takes the cake. My parents were separated, in the process of divorcing, and had split custody between my brother and I. We were 5 and 7 at the time. My dad didn't have his own place yet so when it was his turn to be with us he came back to our house. The one he purchased mind you. And my mom was supposed to leave. One weekend they were arguing over something and it got so bad that my mom wouldn't leave and told my dad she would call the police. Something she apparently did a lot to get her way. Which after growing up with her I can attest she did this a lot unnecessarily to control us. So she left. Called the police. Told them my father was dangerous and had a gun. My dad was in the army and we had plenty guns. Locked in a safe of course. Of course the police were just doing their job, and took my mom a face value. It went so fast from my brother and I watching TV with my dad to the police knocking at our door. My dad opening the door and getting pepper sprayed without the cops saying anything. And then my dad locked the door and the cops couldn't bust it down. So they came around back and broke our sliding glass door in so they could arrest my dad in our front yard with all our neighbors watching. I didn't really understand what was happening at the time but it was traumatizing for sure. Then my mom tried to get full custody of us in their actual divorce, and thank god the judge ruled for split custody. My whole childhood was crappy honestly bc all they did was explain very deep and emotionally complex situations to very young children who just wanted their parents to love each other. But yeah, I've never quite forgiven my mom for that one. 
I read about a case where the wife was trying to take half of a guy's business and millions in personal assets, only to find out that the business had been moved into his son's name years earlier, and the guy donated all their savings, millions of dollars, to a children's hospital in his soon-to-be ex-wife's name so she couldn't get the money. The judge said what he did was technically legal since it was community property and no freeze had been placed on it yet, but was morally unconscionable. Lawyer said in his entire life he never saw a bigger smile on a man's face. He just kept saying I just wanted to help the children and smiling. Not a divorce lawyer but remember this from another reddit. Husband and wife getting divorced. There was a classic car Ferrari, Jaguar or something like that that was worth a lot of money. It was a bone of contention in the divorce. After several months the husband finally proposes that he will let her have the car if she gives him the house. She agrees. Come to find out he had been taking the car out every day and doing loops around the city for hours putting thousands of miles on it making it worth nothing. Holy crap. Divorces can really bring out the worst in people. Not a lawyer but one of my drinking buddies just went through a nasty divorce. One of the things she pitted against him was dollar sign 15k a year spent at a bar. Sounds bad, but 90% of the time they were both there, but he always paid with his card. But now he looks like an alcoholic. Honestly, that's when you call up the manager or even ask the judge to do it so he can verify she was there with him. He owed her $500 as part of the settlement. He brought two buckets of unsorted coins, mostly pennies, to our office. She took the light bulbs out of every fixture when she moved out, then refused to give him right of first refusal if she wanted to get rid of their dog. She spent a year and a half systematically destroying their business and then expected him to pay her hundreds of thousands of dollars for her share of the, now worthless, business. $500 in a small coins is a dong move, but relatively harmless, you put it in manageable containers, take it to the bank, and deposit it, you get exercise and the bank counts your money for you. Taking all the light bulbs is a dong move, but also relatively harmless, you get to go buy more bulbs and a flashlight, and put bulbs back in. Deliberately destroying communal property is unconscionable. Read about 5 answers by now and I want to point out that an insane amount of them led to animal cruelty. What the frick is that about? Probably because it's the most effective way to hurt the other person without breaking the law, which means they should probably make it against the law. Not a lawyer, but my mom forged divorce papers to cheat on my dad. For two years I got my butt beat whenever I brought it up. I chuckled at the last sentence, not out of malice, but I too have been in that crap situation where bringing something up is detrimental to your safety. Sorry bud. Used to work as a file clerk for a divorce attorney. Our client was trying to get full custody over her child because her husband was dangerously neglectful of their son. How was he being dangerously neglectful? By serving spaghetti, instead of turkey, for Thanksgiving. I wish I was making this up. Not a lawyer but child of divorced parents. Mum got custody of me and my brother. She told my dad she would make us hate him. Went from a big house to a three bedroom apartment and grew up poor. Only saw my dad three times a year and talked to him on the phone once a week for an hour. Turns out that's what she asked for in court but she lied and said our dad didn't want to see or talk to us. He paid her child support and alimony every month and she worked full time. We grew up with no wifi or cable, no sports or after school activities and I never went to a summer camp. Apparently we also didn't have insurance for like 2 years when I was 12. Turns out she was pocketing all the money and keeping it in her savings. Apparently around the divorce hearing when I didn't have insurance she had 12k in savings but the judge didn't see that as a red flag. We did hate our dad until we got older and realized he was trying to give us stuff the whole time and offering to send us to summer camp but she refused. Even after her hoarding all that money and us not growing up with our dad he still paid for my college and books and bought me a car when mine broke down. I ended up stopping a relationship with my mom when I found out she called me a W in order to defend my brother's behavior. She didn't bother to reach out even though she's the parent. Later I contacted her on and off trying to fix the relationship. She never bought a book for uni and also refused to let me use her tax info to get a better loan for school when I had to my last year of university. In the end, 
Her bitterness fricked her over because she no longer has a daughter and she has a son who yells at her and uses her for free rent. My ex did a good job of tricking me that we were having a nice, cordial, easy divorce until she asked me to sign a couple of quick, easy things. She was in a real hurry and got upset that I said I needed a couple of hours to read through them. Turns out she got someone to sneak in there that I was emotionally abusive, which was the opposite of the truth. I had to end up getting my own lawyer because of her shady crap and mine said she could have essentially taken anything and all of what she wanted if I would have signed that. Yeah, don't ever sign anything just real quick. My mom worked at an animal hospital about 20 years ago while she was studying to become a vet. One day a guy brought in two beautiful chocolate labs and said they needed to be put down. He had one both in a divorce and was leaving town, so he wanted to get rid of them to make the move easier. My mom took this really hard and I think it's what made her chose another path in life. Not a divorce lawyer but my mom used to have these girl party weekends where all these women would come over. My mom would inject different fruits with vodka with a needle she got from the hospital she worked at. Well my parents had a rocky marriage and I guess it showed at school when I was young because child protective services showed up at my school and then our door. My mom falsely accused my dad of using the needle that she randomly found in the house for injecting H and went as far as getting a restraining order put on him so I couldn't see him for months. Six months later they were back together, and my dad did a drug test that found no H in his system. Stupidness. Not me but my cousin is a vet whose friend went through a divorce. She was friends with the wife and husband but the wife was a nasty bee. Their dog had puppies a month prior to the divorce and the husband wanted all the dogs. She gets them and instead of selling the puppies brings them to my cousin saying she wants all six. I believe, puppies and the mother put down. My cousin takes them and says she's do it and the wife just leaves. Little does she know my cousin snuck them all out the back door with help from all her co-workers and gave the puppies to the husband. This happened about 4-5 years ago so sorry for the vague details. Good on your cousin. I'm just emotionally exhausted after reading about all the euthanized animals. Not a lawyer, but a child of divorce. My parents owned a couple duplexes in town as well as our house. They had saved enough up to pay a property off in full and my dad convinced my mom that it was better to pay off one of the duplexes instead of the house. A couple months later he files for divorce and only asks for the paid off property. He got it, lived in one side and rented out the other and stuck my mom with two kids and three mortgages, and of course refused to pay child support for my sister because she wasn't his by a daughter even though he had legally adopted her. Still makes me feel icky how conniving he was. I was a divorce paralegal for 15 years, the worst opposing party we ever had represented himself. He cheated and left his wife then proceeded to file for custody of the dog. After two hearings just about the dog, the judge orders that they share the dog alternating one week at a time. On his first round of visitation, he collects this sweet dog and then immediately has it put to sleep. The following week he gives ex-wife a canister with the dog's ashes. Obviously she was devastated. It was heartbreaking. The judge was not happy. He sanctioned this man and then gave literally everything to the wife and the judgment. This guy was a such a nutball. He even tried to claim the condiments in the fridge as property. Literally wrote it out in his property claim. Ketchup. Mustard. Mayo. He also claimed that wife's sex toys should be awarded to him. Real classy guy. I am no longer practicing but when I was active I practiced in a small firm. We represented the wife in a divorce against her husband who was a very prominent businessman. As a show of force by the husband he purchased the building where our offices were located and proceeded to make small but annoying changes. Parking spaces were moved to furthest spots. Elevator would randomly be down for maintenance. Our offices were located on the top floor. The cleaning schedule and crews would sporadically change. The firm's lease also happened to end during the divorce representation and we were given a notice to vacate in the middle of the winter holidays. After our departure husband put up signage of his company on the outside of the building where our offices used to be located. I am not really a divorce lawyer but I am currently stuck with a divorce case. Both sides have been at a standstill for at least 4 months now over a difference of less than a thousand dollars. Like, we could have settled late 2019 but they both just want one last high one over the other one. 
Doesn't help that I hate family law cases to begin with. The only winners are the attorneys and they have to go through a lot of booze to cope with the stuff they deal with. Again not a divorce lawyer but 30 years ago a friend of mine was going through a messy divorce. His wife had cheated on him and was trying to take him for everything. Really spiteful when she didn't get something. The court had instructed her to turn over the car to him. She waited until the last day on the order and then returned it with serious body engine damage. It was pretty clear she'd run it into a wall or tree out of spite right before doing it. But since she just left it parked on the street by his apartment and dropped the keys in his mailbox. There was no way to prove it. I came up with a solution. Get it stolen. As a favor to him I drove the car up to Harlem while he followed in his other car. Parked it in front of some gang members. Waved to them. Blatantly tossed the keys on the driver's seat through the open window and then got in his other car with him and we left. We went around the block, waited 10 minutes, went back and the car was gone. Car was never seen again. He reported it as stolen and collected the insurance. Nice job waiting out the statute of limitations there. My sister and her ex-husband had agreed in arbitration that he would keep the house and car and that she would keep the furniture and electronics. My dad and I rented a U-Haul to help her go get her stuff. We figured the amount of stuff she would get would be enough to get about $10 15k off Craigslist. We arrived at the house to find only an Ikea futon, a smaller TV than they had, an old iMac, and all the outdoor furniture destroyed. We were so devastated for her. She decided she wanted to close that venomous chapter of her life so she just took her losses rather than fight for stupid possessions. Happy ending. She finished optometry school and became an optometrist found a great husband, and is raising two awesome kids. The divorce lawyer my mother-in-law had to fight had a case so vicious that they wanted everything split right down the middle, up to the block of cheese in the fridge, and she won that case. I can only imagine how long it took to split everything in the house. It won't be funny though but definitely evil. My mother left my father because of a 40s crisis. At first she said it was to get her freedom back so people were more empathetic to my father. Seeing that, she changed her version and started to spread the world my father cheated on her and raped her. When I stood up for my father, she claimed I beat her during years as well. You would be surprised how people would definitely believe a female who claimed being a victim of domestic and sexual violence. It's been 8 years, I've lost more than half of my genealogical tree, even on my father's side. See like her other reason real victims are taken enough seriously. My dad on the other hand is still madly in love with her and says we need to forgive to move on. Wish I could be half this brave. Watched a 14 million dollar settlement, which took months to achieve, abandoned when the parties came to who would keep the cat. For that, there was a week long trial. Jurors wanted to euthanize them both and take the cat home themselves. Opposing party left on his daughter's birthday while she was gone with her mom to her birthday party. He also took the freezer containing most of the food in the home. He had controlled all the finances and left his wife and his child with almost no food or money. A vindictive co-worker was going through a divorce and talked about it endlessly. The part that peed me off about it was every time she talked about the possessions she was fighting over. Even she referred to them as his tools or his car or his dog. She knew they were his things, but was fighting him for them just out of spite. I'm sure her lawyer was loving it cashing in. Not a lawyer, but an older cousin's ex-wife tried to get literally half of the house in a divorce. Like, she wanted to have half of the house removed and demolished just to spite my cousin whom she had cheated on. I was a fam law paralegal but my worst was my own divorce. Actually, my ex came out as gay and decided he wanted to be a costume designer. Okay, well bad for me but more power to him. He decided the historical collection of paper dolls my grandma had left me should go to him because he wanted them as models for his costume designs. My lawyer had to claim them, the shoebox of paper dolls, as non-marital property due to being an inheritance. His lawyer made some sort of legal claim about how they were commingled, and thus marital property, because I'd put other stuff in the box that I had bought during the marriage, such as a coloring book. So in an otherwise uncontested divorce, there's a giant paragraph in the decree awarding me my non-marital, inherited box of paper dolls. I had a co-worker whose husband, a doctor, threw her out of the house that they shared for more than 30 years. 
He had a new girlfriend and wanted her to move in. She had no idea he was cheating on her. Since she was working for him she was left with nothing. No job. No money. He cancelled her cards and bank accounts. And nowhere to live. In a hurry to work she only found a minimum wage job. And a tiny studio apartment. At that time she was in her early 60s and not in good health. He dragged that divorce for years. Gave money to their. Spoiled kids. So they took his side. I never understood why someone could be so mean to the woman he once loved. The mother of his children. A woman who worked for him for years. Helping him build his practice. The only explanation I can find it's his love of money. Finally a couple of years later he was accused of sexual misconduct and lost his license. Technically he retired. His beautiful house has been for sale for months now and it's probably going to be demolished for a new development. I have no idea if the girlfriend is still with him but in a perfect scenario I hope she left him. As for my co-worker, we lost touch after I left the store but I hope she found happiness. Not a lawyer, but was involved in a case as a character witness to the husband father. To preface the story, he was an annuities investor and had his money and home before he met his wife. He also had a prenuptial agreement that was ignored during division of assets. He was also divorcing her for infidelity witnessed by both of his children and caught on household security cameras. As the case came to an end, the California judge passed down. Equal split of assets. One house was to be sold with profits split down the middle. Two all household possessions sold and split. Three, alimony and child support would equal to half his pre-tax wages. Four, she would receive half of his retirement and investments. Five, she had 70% custody with jurisdiction over visitation. Six, she was to keep his Porsche, Escalade and Mercedes S550. He kept the BMW 750i. 7. He was responsible for all court costs and fees for both parties. The crazy response to this, while still in court, was. 1. He immediately called and quit his job. 2. He had already sold his house to his brother for 50k dollars, before the proceedings. House in Newport Beach, CA worth $2.70 mil. 3. Changed his life insurance so his brother was the recipient. When he called and quit right in front of the judge, I laughed my butt off. When my parents were mid-divorce, took years because my cheating awful alcoholic father refused to sign the papers. My dad had a weekend visit with us and ended up kidnapping us from our mother for about a week. I was maybe 10 and my brother was 8, so that puts us in 2005-ish. He enrolled us in school. This is the only part of the story I remember we went for about 2 days, at my grandparents house and took us to live there. My mom couldn't call the police since they were legally married with no custody agreement he was allowed to keep us wherever he wanted. My mom could not come pick us up because she filed a restraining order against my father previous to this incident. He and my grandparents threatened to call the police if she came on the property. So my clever mom called him and was like let's talk about this. My dad's still in love with her and dumb as frick agrees and meets her at a mutual friend's home. Really only mom's friend. And they get him trashed. He's an alcoholic and would never turn down booze. She keeps him up drinking all night. And convinces him to take us all out for breakfast. She waits at the end of the driveway while dad gets cleaned up he sends us outside and when we get in the car, with none of our stuff, mind you, mom whips it out of there and we didn't see dad for a long time after that. Not a divorce lawyer, but I had an old neighbor that got a new car and then went back the next day and told them her husband loved her so much that he wanted the exact same thing and the exact same financing. She immediately hid that car at her mom's house and then filed for divorce. The affair came to light when they pulled the second car over and a strange man was driving it around. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.